oh, there's no way that's going well. And I was looking, I was like, boy, that's going pretty far. The champ is here. Pierce Lepage, world champion in the decathlon. Thanks so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. I got to ask you, paint me a picture. What have the last couple days been like for you? From the moment you were standing on that podium, listening to O Canada, to now, has it been a oh, whirlwind? It's been hectic because, you know, after decathlon, you're so sore. I remember waking up after, after the decathlon, <laughs> I was like, I can barely walk. Like, what am I going to do? How am I going to get to this medal ceremony? Then getting there was just overwhelming to, you know, actually receive your medal officially and it all kind of sets in seeing all the fans signing autographs then next thing you know i'm on a plane ride home i'm jet lagged <laughs> but uh no it's just nice to be home see my family you know have a little have a little celebration and you know have some much needed sleep my job is to cover the event we we were sports fans at heart though and after five events we were sitting around in our newsroom and someone says well, can pierce do it and more than one person said let me answer that after the javelin it's, it's historically not been your best event. I don't yeah, think you would, you would dispute that at yeah. all. I want to play you your best throw here from the job. Yeah. Because, you know, obviously you knew you had to put up a number. This was such a key throw for you. Mm -hmm. And what I really want you to walk us through is not only the throw, but we all noticed this and it made everyone kind of react. The look on your face when you saw the number 60.90 right here. Even yeah, you looked yeah, surprised. Yeah. Was that the look of someone who said, you know what? I have a really good chance now to become world champion. No, that was the look of someone like, how the heck did that just go that far with how <laughs> I threw that javelin? There's something about me and javelin where my worst throws feeling wise somehow go far. Like my javelin hit the, hit the ground like before I threw it. And I was like, oh, there's no way that's going well. And I was looking, I was like, boy, that's going pretty far. So no, I, it was super, I was super happy with it. And I saw the number and I was like, Yes, I don't have to run the 1500 fast. What's going through your head before that 15? You're getting set, last event, you're in the driver's seat. You basically control your own fate. I felt pretty good about the run. I feel like I felt better than Gatsis because I feel like I put a lot of work in because my coach did not like my running Gatsis, so he ran me like a horse for like yeah. the <laughs> last little bit. But no, it just, the 15 always sucks. So I did my first lap, did my second lap, and the third lap I was like, man, this really sucks. I, I wanted to score uh, score 89. That was like my goal. I said after Gossis, I want to score 89. I think I can score 89 at Worlds. So, you know, I saw, I was looking down the last 100. I saw the time and I was like, oh, I can do it. And I just sprinted, and, you know, the rest of history. Let's talk about the man who was standing next to you, uh, Damian Warner, who, as I'm sure you know, casts a huge shadow. And it, and it comes because of what he's accomplished in the sport. And I know you've mentioned many times, you guys are friends. You look up to him. He's almost a hero type person to you. But, you know, there's that old saying, to be the man, you need to beat the man. And you did that. Was it even a little more special to, to win this, but also to be next to Damien, but a little bit higher on that podium? Yeah, like, you know, Damien's a phenomenal athlete. You know, he's done so much, but obviously I want to win. You know, yeah. I want to do well. I want to have my time and stuff like that. But yeah, no, to have him beside me, and to have Lyndon, you know, he said our honorary Canadian beside me. It just, there's, you know, if I was going to win and I wanted people on the podium, those are the two people I'd want there. So even though I beat him, I'm still happy he's there with me. And I, I thought we, we both performed super well, you know, and we came back from, you know, maybe not the best, this is the most stellar day ones. And uh, yeah, we showed why we were decathletes. I gotta ask you just about the decathlon. I've, I've been beating this drum for a long time. I understand in athletics, there are marquee events, the 100, the 200, always gonna draw the most eyes the relay but to me you should be the man who gets the biggest spotlight on a day like today um you're superman in, in my eyes when it comes to the decathlon and it doesn't always end up being that way does that bother you a little bit i guess like i feel like yeah decathlon is unlike any other events you know people will train the entire time they'll go out and they'll do the best they can at one event and then we do that and then go back and do it nine more times, which I feel like I feel like the thing with the decathlon is a lot of people don't truly understand how grueling and tough it is and even how much, like how hard it is to even finish the decathlon, which is why people call it, you know, call us like a brotherhood. It's because we all understand what it's actually like to go in there, how crazy it is in the back room when you have five minutes to prepare for an event, if something happened or if you're injured. I feel like it's kind of lost its prestige a little bit, but uh, you know, hopefully it gets back, you know? So now you're in a unique position because of COVID. Ordinarily, the world champion 
has two years before, you know, the next Olympics. You don't have that. But you're also gonna have a big fat target on your back. You're the world champion going into Paris. Uh, are you prepared to, to have all eyes on you now as one of the men to beat? Um, yeah, you know, I've, I'm already a pretty tall guy, so people already <laughs> kind of ask, you know, they, they see me around. Yeah. So, uh, no, I feel pretty pretty confident. I don't I don't think that type of nerves gets to me. I feel like, you know, people always say I'm pretty laid back. I'm just going to do my thing, go back to training, do what I did this year, be healthy, you know, work on my events, and I'll be ready for uh, Paris, and I'm ready to do well.